Many miles away from home Steps were difficult I'm exhausted But I did not fall I hope Something good is coming up Free like a bird but also bound up And my footsteps on the ground I raise my head Listen to the sounds I'm happy with what I have found Just breathe Just breathe Just breathe Just breathe driving a car with gull wing doors. How exciting is that? It's an AutoZam AZ1, you guys. This is so cool. It seems like everybody uh, is driving the AutoZam AZ1 within like these last couple weeks, uh, regular car reviews and a couple of others. What a cool car this is. Seriously, thank you so much to the owner of the car, Nick, bringing this one out. Uh, he imported it from Japan into Vancouver, Canada, not too long ago. Has been slowly kind of doing modifications to it. Um, and kind of just bringing it up to speed, getting it in really good working order. It's got a nice steering wheel here. It's got a Sparco weighted shifter, which helps a lot with shifting feel. Um, and the car is just hilarious. It's a K car. So it's got a three cylinder turbocharged engine in the back. It's mid engine, rear wheel drive. It's close to home with my MR2. Um, and it's got 660 cc's. That's how big the engine is. Uh, it's basically a motorcycle engine, but this is a K car. So this was this engine basically was put in a lot of other cars at the time. Um, so AutoZam is a brand of Mazda. So this is a Mazda, but it was built and engineered by Suzuki. So it's like a Suzuki Mazda AutoZam collaboration, kind of weird. It's just just call it the AZ1, and you'll be fine. Um, but this engine was put in a lot of other K cars at the time over in Japan. This is what the Japanese people, like this is their bread and butter. I mean, the roads over there are super tiny, super small. There's a lot of people um, and taxes and gas are really expensive there for bigger displacement engines, right? So naturally you want something that's really small and you can't get much smaller than 660 cc's, putting out roughly 60 horsepower. But here's the really cool thing. You can hear a little bit of turbo spool and it sounds unreal. Nick, the owner of the car, has actually put an aftermarket exhaust on it, which sounds awesome. It revs to 9,000 RPM. Pedals are in a great spot. Uh, you can heel toe with relative ease. This is a great size car. I've got plenty of room, which is really funny. Compared to the MR2, it's, it's tiny, even compared to an SW20 MR2, which some people complain about, but, oh my God. It's not actually like, I've driven a car with smaller pedals than this, and that was my buddy Jesse's Austin Mini, and the gas pedal's like a square, about that big. Uh, and this is a little bit bigger than that, and you can actually drive it with shoes. I can heel toe this car with shoes, which is super awesome. It feels like a lot more than 60 horsepower. Why is that? Well, because it only weighs 1,600 pounds. 1,600 pounds. That's 1,200 pounds lighter than my SW20 MR2 Turbo. It's it's awesome. It feels like a car with like a hundred, a normal size car, like a hatchback or something, with about 160 to 170 horsepower. It feels like somewhere in there. It's only got 60. The best characteristic though, versus uh, the Honda Beat that we drove about a year ago on the same road. The Honda Beat was NA, right? This, the turbo, you feel the torque. It has way more torque than the Honda Beat. Or even if it doesn't, the torque number isn't necessarily bigger, it feels like super peppy between like 2,000 and 5,000 RPM. Uh, and then of course it revs all the way to nine. But it's, like it's pretty good. 
like right back on the brakes immediately. <laughs> it's so small, but you know what? The steering feel is it's awesome. It is so good. No power steering and you feel it, but as soon as you, like, even when you're moving the car around a parking lot, this is the one car where if you have no power steering, you can actually maneuver it just as well at super low speeds. You don't even feel it. Carrying like maybe 400 pounds up there. And the steering feels really good. It's super direct. The owner says at about 120 kilometers an hour, it gets very sketchy because it's, it's like kind of twitchy. I mean, it's a very tight steering rack here. You get a little bit of turbo spool, you do. It has that little amount of tuner car to it. And at low RPMs, good exhaust choice, Nick, because this sounds like an Evo. It's a three cylinder, but it sounds like an Evo at low RPMs, like that really meaty, gurgly kind of uh, low cylinder count sound uh, coming out of the exhaust is phenomenal. It's got everything on the inside. I mean, we have an aftermarket deck in here, a Pioneer deck. Uh, we've got Bluetooth talk on the phone. We've got heat. Uh, we've got working AC. What else do you need? We have a phone charger here. That's basically it. I mean, the windows roll down in one, one crank of the, uh, of the manual window roller thing. Um, and that's about it. That's the only window you get, obviously, because it is gullwing. So uh, you can see up here the window, or the glass rather, carries from the roof all the way down to the door. Styling-wise, this thing is great, especially in this color, two-tone, awesome. That's another thing with the Mazda Speeds. They were all uh, single-tone, uh, single paint for the entirety of the car, like including all the side panels and everything, uh, whereas this is two-tone. Pretty cool though, pretty badass. I love these wheels uh, that Nick's put on the car. And it's just got so much character, so many looks in this car. There's the turbo. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say this car's fast because it's not. What I am gonna say though is it's plenty fast enough. This would put up a good fight versus a brand new Miata. I will put it that way, okay? This would actually put up a really good fight versus a brand new Miata in terms of raw speed and everything like that. And same with like chassis dynamics. It's only got 155 section tires in the front and the rear, uh, which is pretty funny if you think about it. is like a little bit droney at lower rpms but it sounds really good this car is a riot to drive and you think you're you should shift but you're only at only at 6500 rpm and you've still got 2500 left to play with so much fun <laughs> this is definitely faster than the honda beat absolutely is it as confidence inspiring as the Honda Beat? I don't think so. This seems just a little bit more sketchy kind of when you're really tossing the weight around from corner to corner. But I, I don't think sketchy is a word that really first came to my mind when I'm driving this car, to be honest. So here's the thing. The AutoZam AZ1 is known for the gullwing doors. Do I think this car would be just as special if it didn't have gullwing doors, would people still be fawning over it? Would they be paying the premiums they are uh, to get behind the wheel of this car if it didn't have gullwing doors? That's a question we will never find out, we'll never know, but I have a hunch and I think that no, it would not be as popular if it didn't have the gullwing doors. It looks awesome, it would be popular, but the amount of press and attention that these cars have got just because of the doors is hilarious. Like part of the 300 SL Gullwing back in the day was the Gullwing doors. That was like an insane thing at the time. But honestly, it's great fun. This is Nick's only car right now. It's not his only car, but it's his daily right now. It's the only car he has around Vancouver at the moment. super cool to open up 
up a gullwing door. It's the best feeling in the world. Uh, and then you park next to like a small car, like a Honda Fit or something, and you're a third of the size. So it's like, it's literally just a mini supercar. It's so funny. I think that's why you buy this car, honestly. You have to have a sense of humor to buy this car, 100%. That turbo provides a lot of torque, anywhere above like 3,000 RPM. It's way faster than I thought it was gonna be. I would, I would buy this. Like when I drove the Honda Beat, I was like, ah, oh, you know, I'd consider this. It's a really quirky car. But then you step inside this, and you're like, well, this looks way cooler than the Honda Beat. Sure, it might not handle as well as the Honda Beat at the limit, but it looks way cooler. It's got gullwing doors. It's faster. It's got a turbo on it. And it's just more of a, like, tuner car. Uh, like, almost it feels like it's more ready for modifications than a Honda Beat, right? It's got more character. Like, you just have to have a sense of humor to even drive this car. I love it so much. I want one of these so badly. I really do. It's so much fun to drive. The steering is perfect. It's a little bit bumpy, but the ride's like fairly good. It doesn't seem sketchy. Like I brought it up to like 80 or 90 kilometers an hour. It doesn't really seem very sketchy uh, to me at least, even on this bumpy road here. It's that little, little bit of crazy like alienness about this car that makes it so much fun to drive and even just look at. Just around great bye you guys thank you so much for watching hope you guys enjoy the autos m az1 as i sure did go follow us on uh instagram hit us up on youtube subscribe if you haven't already see you guys next time